What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. This morning I'm on Table Rock Lake in Southern Missouri and I'm actually preparing for an on the water fishing lesson I'm having in a couple days. And this is a new part of Table Rock I've never been to before. And so what I wanna do in this video is explain to you how I actually locate fish offshore during the summertime on a new area of the lake I've never been to. And so I'll be doing a lot of graphing on offshore points, humps, stuff like that. I'll show you my graph images. I'll show you how I actually catch those fish once I find them and everything. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so I just made a run up the lake and I just pulled up on a really good looking main lake point. And whenever I'm looking for fish offshore in the summertime, I'm gonna spend most of my time in this position, behind the steering wheel, staring at my fish finder. And I may graph for six of the eight hours I'm on the water in the summertime, looking for those big schools of fish. And Table Rock is on fire right now, so I may be able to graph a little bit less and fish a little bit more. But if you wanna be successful fishing offshore, you have to put your time in behind the steering wheel, looking at your graph, otherwise, you're not gonna find those high percentage areas and those places the fish are on. And if you fish too much, you're gonna waste a lot of time and you're not gonna be successful fishing offshore. So to give you guys an idea of where I'm fishing today, here's a map of Table Rock Lake. And today I'm fishing on the far east side of the lake down by the dam. And the only section of Table Rock I'd ever fished before this trip was the far west end of the lake in this small three mile section. And these areas are very different in terms of water clarity, the primary species of bass, and all kinds of things. And so I couldn't use a lot of past experience to help me find these fish offshore, and I had to start from scratch. So as I mentioned earlier, whenever I'm going to a new lake to look for bass offshore, or even if I'm going to a lake that I haven't been to in let's say a year that I know really well, I always spend at least two thirds of my day behind my steering wheel looking at my fish finder and my electronics. And my goal is to find two to five offshore areas in that six hours of graphing. And then I'm gonna spend about two hours of my day actually fishing and making casts and checking to see if there's fish down there. And the most common mistake I see new offshore anglers make is spending way more time fishing than graphing. And it's definitely really hard to graph for six hours and only fish for two hours, especially when you can only fish one day a week. You wanna maybe get out in the lake make a lot of casts, try to catch as many fish as possible. But what I found after years of fishing offshore is that if you're gonna be successful in catching fish away from the bank, you have to put your time behind your steering wheel graphing for fish. And that means spending more time graphing than fishing. And so today what I did during this fishing trip was spend the first two and a half hours of my fishing day just driving my boat, looking for schools of offshore bass. And you might be wondering, well, where do you start looking? And that's a really good question because I had no idea where these fish were prior to this fishing trip. I didn't know if they were in 10 feet of water, 20 feet of water, 30 feet of water, whether they're on rock piles, brush piles, points, ledges, there's so many places these fish can be. And I actually did just make a video about my rules of thumb of how deep to look for bass offshore based on the water clarity and the time of year that you're gonna be fishing in. And so check out that video and it'll give you some guidelines of where to start. So because the water clarity on Table Rock Lake was greater than four feet of visibility, I used my guidelines to tell me that I need to be looking pretty much as deep as the thermocline and I looked for the thermocline on my graph and it actually hadn't really set up yet because of all of the high rising water that we've had through Table Rock. And so because of that, I pretty much had to try to graph everything from five feet of water all the way out to 45 feet of water. And so to start, I looked for the most obvious pieces of structure on the lake, which were main lake points with creek channels swinging against them. And this is a really common and very effective type of structure on lakes like Table Rock. But the types of structure that's gonna be most productive on your lake will change by the type of lake you're gonna be fishing. And so if you watch some of my other videos, you'll get a feel for which types of structures are good on which type of lakes. And so check out some of my older videos for information on that. But what I did was graph a lot of these offshore points with creek channels swinging by them. And I started up in 10 feet of water and graphed all the way out to 45. 
And my preconceived notion before getting to the lake is that I was going to have to start fishing in about 20 to 35 feet of water, looking for fish suspended in deep timber or on brush piles, things like that. And I spent a lot of my morning actually graphing those types of structures. But unfortunately, I didn't find any fish on any of that stuff. And I finally started graphing shallower than that in that 10 to 15 foot zone and found some really good rock piles that had some fish on them. It's not a bass. Oh, it is a bass. It's a smallmouth. There we go. That's a good one right there, guys. Look at that right there. Nice small. He wasn't coming up and jumping. I thought I had like a drum or something, but that fish crushed it. Fishing a little rock pile here. I've actually been graphing around for like two and a half hours, guys, trying to graph in like 30, 40 foot of water. One second here, I gotta get this guy unhooked. Oh, but there we go. Nice two and a half pound smallie right there. Like I was saying, I've been graphing around for probably three hours now. I probably fished for about 15 or 20 minutes. I really didn't see anything I liked offshore really deep in like a 35, 40 foot of water. But I finally found a couple rock piles up in about 17 foot. And they look so good that I had to throw a little uh, swing head. I'll show you right here. But there it is right there. Just a swing head with a striking menace grub. And that dude just crushed it first cast. So I wanted to get this guy back in the water really fast. But beautiful fish. And there's probably some more down in there, so let's get after it. Man, that's what I'm talking about right there. Beautiful bass. Love catching these southern smallmouth, and that is a good one right there. Nice fish. Man, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Just got that fish on a little striking menace grub. I was throwing it on a three-quarter ounce swing head here, and just Texas rigging down there. And this is one of my favorite baits when fishing in deep, clear water, when I'm trying to search for fish, because it's pretty finesse looking to the bass, and so you can get a lot of bites on it. But at the same time, I can keep it down in the rocks and fish it with 17-pound fluorocarbon line, crank it back to the boat pretty quick, and as you can see, those smallmouth spots and largemouth chew this bait. Man, that wind really kicked up here and it blew me way off the spot, but right when I hooked that fish, I actually marked a waypoint up on my front graph. So I'm able to go right back to where I made my cast. And whenever you're fishing really windy days, or just any day, when you hook a fish, make sure you drop a waypoint because then you can get right back to where you hook that fish and make that same cast again and hopefully connect with another good fish. So I'm gonna get right back over that spot and fire back out here. So I pulled back up to that spot and I caught another little largemouth. And so this told me there was a group of fish on this rock pile and I actually left it because I was prepping for an on the water fishing lesson and didn't want to wear out all the fish. But what I now learned is that there are fish up in 15 to 20 feet of water on points in rock piles. And so earlier in the day I'd actually graphed two or three rock piles on top of these points that I didn't fish because I only saw a couple dots around them and was looking for the mega school or the giant groups of fish that I never ended up finding. And so because I just caught some fish on a rock pile off a point, I went back and tried to fish the other rock piles I would found early in the day. And you'll see what happens here in a second. Good one. Oh, came off. Horse a little bit too much. Oh man, that was a good one. That was like a two and a half pounder again. I think that was a spot actually. I couldn't really see it fully though. I just saw how big it was. But uh, on that swing head again, on a rocky spot I graphed about two hours ago. Got him. That's a good one. That's a really good one right there. Stay pegged fish. There we go, look at that spot. Holy crap, that was the same, oh, he broke me off. Oh man, look at the size of that spot, that thing is going crazy. That is a toad. Man, that's the same size as the last one I lost too. There are just some spots down there. Look how fat and healthy that fish is though. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's so jacked up when I figure him out offshore, guys. It's so fun. Look how big that fish is though. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Oh, beautiful bass right there. That's what I'm talking about. Man, there we go, beautiful fish. It's like, let him get back down there. 
There we go, broke me off. I'm glad he didn't break me off when I swung him in, but whew, two fish off the spot, guys. They're both big ones, too. Right on that swing head. This swing head gets bigger than average bites offshore, guys. If you're trying to go for bigger fish, throw that swing head rather than like a shaky head or a drop shot, and you'll start getting some bigger bites this summer on these clear water lakes. So there we go. I finally figured out a pattern. These fish are on rock piles, off points, in 10 to 15 feet of water. And I was actually able to run this pattern on a few other points and catch some other good smallmouth bass. And you're probably wondering what these spots look like on Navionics and on my fish finder. And so I wanna show you that really quick. So here's a recording of the first spot that I found on Table Rock Lake where fish were set up in rock piles. And this is the rock pile on my down imaging. And you'll see the jagged bottom. And this spot's really hard to actually see the fish in, but the fish are actually right here. And you can see these few dots that are positioned just off the bottom. And I actually just made a video explaining these sonar images completely, and you can check that video out here if you want an in-depth analysis of these spots. But here's the next spot where I caught those good spot bass. And it's another point with another good rocky spot up on top. You can see three or four fish just on the break right here and I actually saw these fish the third time I graphed over the spots. The first two times I didn't really see very many fish in there because they were actually tucked away in those rocks but the third time I graphed over them which is actually right after I caught those two spotted bass they got a little bit active and showed themselves a little bit and so you can see sometimes when you graph over these areas you may not actually see the fish in those rocky spots but if you catch a few you can sometimes graph over them and you'll see that those fish move up out of those rocks and then suspend or just kind of get right on top of them and then here are the areas on Navionics where I caught some of my best fish and this spot here is just a long point that sticks out in the middle of the lake and there was a nice rock pile on it this is another area where I caught them, and it's basically a sharp point that has a flat spot on top, and there was a rock pile there, and a creek channel cut right up against it. And then the last spot is an island where a creek channel swung pretty close to the island, and there was a rock pile up on top of a point created by the island in that main river channel. So after catching a few more fish off these points on these rocky spots, I decided to look for more points with rock piles on top of them. And it actually took me another hour and a half of graphing to find two more areas where there were actually good rock piles with fish on them around these points. And I was able to pull up on a couple of these points and get a few more bites. There we go. That's a nice smallie right there too. Look at that fish, got him on the swim bait this time. Saw some fish suspended instead of on the bottom this time on this rocky spot. And so I decided to pick up a swim bait and that was the trick on this spot right here. Lost one at the boat too, probably a similar size fish. All solid, two and a quarter, two and a half pound bass though. Beautiful fish right there. Whew, that's what I'm talking about. 3.8 inch swim bait, you'll be seeing that bait a lot this summer as well, but nice bass. Beautiful fish right there, nice one. Awesome. So guys, fishing that swing head for a while, got a few more fish, and then as I was graphing over this area, right off this island here, found another rocky spot, and I actually picked up the swim bait because I saw two or three fish off the bottom on this spot and a lot of the guys who were catching fish during the major league fishing event out here on table rock were catching them on this swim bait and so i decided that i should pick it up as well i've actually thrown it a ton today and i just haven't seen that many fish that were positioned properly for it and i'll get into this more in a different video but just so you know the swim bait catch some good fish as well so after my day on table rock lake i recorded how much time i spent graphing versus fishing and what I found is that I spent five and a half hours graphing and driving over offshore structure. And I found five offshore spots in that time that had fish. I actually caught fish off of four of them. And so in five hours, I found five spots. That's one spot per hour. 
And so don't get discouraged if you graph for hours and hours and don't find it because I went two and a half hours before I found my first spot. Then in the last two and a half hours, I found four more areas because I kind of got a feel for what I was looking for. And it's not uncommon for me to go three or four hours without finding a good offshore spot and then find two or three right after each other because I figure out what the fish are relating to, what depth they're in, things like that. And so you cannot get discouraged when looking for fish offshore. And you also want to make sure you're not spending a lot of time fishing. Again, I only fished for about two and a half hours on this day. And most of that was pulling up on a spot where I thought I may have seen fish. I would make 10 casts. I wouldn't get a bite and I would move on. And so I was checking some of these offshore spots as I was graphing them. I wasn't just graphing straight for two and a half hours. I'd graph for 45 minutes, see a good spot, pull up, make a few casts. If I didn't see anything, I pull up the trolling motor and move on. And again, not making a lot of casts on these spots, 10 casts max, just to see if those fish were there, they were active. I may throw two or three baits down there. But Again, driving my boat more than fishing was the key to putting those good smallmouth bass in the boat on a new lake or a new area of a lake I'd never been to before. Well guys, that's it for today. I had a blast catching those smallmouth in the swing head. And it just goes to show that if you put some time in graphing on a new area of your lake or a new lake in general, you can find some really good fish offshore. Again, I probably graphed for five to five and a half hours today and fished for about two and a half hours. But because of that, I was able to find four really good offshore spots. I probably caught seven or eight good two to two and a half pound smallmouth and probably could have caught a lot more if I had actually tried to fish for them. And so if you put in in your time behind your steering wheel looking at your graph you can find some good offshore structure and then it's just determining which type of structure they're on whether it's the shallow rock piles and 15 20 feet of water the deep trees and 40 feet of water brush piles on points you never know what the fish are going to be doing on a given day but as long as you can put a few of the pieces together get a few bites you can start crushing them offshore like i did today so hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want more content from Fish the Moment, check out my website, fishthemoment.com. On my website, I offer virtual fishing lessons you can do from your home using Google Hangout, on the water fishing lessons where you can go out in your boat and I can show you how to find fish with your electronics and on the water, and also lake breakdowns of some of those popular lakes around the country where I'll give spot recommendations, conditions, and lure recommendations as well. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel in a more personal way, donate on my Patreon page. On Patreon, you can give a small monthly donation that helps me continue to make quality content for you guys into the future. And last but not least, check out my social media pages. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and I post a lot of great pictures, videos, and articles about bass fishing. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.